Hello, and welcome to Chapter 2, an overview of the ICD-10. So you're going to notice that I did put a picture of your ICD-10 for you here. ICD-10 for hospitals. Uh, this is the 2021 version because that's what I had a picture of, but I am using 2022. Um, and so I'm unsure everybody may have a different, it may be 2021 or 2022. Doesn't matter. It's still the manual we're going to be using. So let's give an overview of what the ICD-10 is. So whose ICD-10 is used globally? So who stands for the World Health Organization? Please remember that, that's important. So the International Classification of Diseases, 10th edition clinical modification is what ICD-10-CM stands for. It is designed for the classification of patient morbidity and mortality, sorry, mortality information for statistical purposes and for the indexing of health records by disease and operation for data storage and retrieval. Okay, so that's a lot of words to say. It tells what people have, what kind of diseases, what kind of illnesses, and it can be used for statistics. That is hard to say quickly. So let's talk a little bit about how it's used for statistical purposes. So during COVID-19, do you guys remember that uh, you were able to hear what percentage of the population had COVID or has COVID or how rapidly uh, they were forecasting it was going to move through? Well, the way that they were able to get those numbers was because of the diagnosis codes. So whenever you bill a claim, and it had COVID-19 on it, it would go into the statistics. So not only was were the diagnoses being sent in for the insurance to pay and the, the claims being paid and the patient being treated, it was also sent into a statistical, uh, lost my train of thought, a statistical program so that they could give the numbers. Sorry, I, all of a sudden that just flew out of my head, but we're going to continue on. So classification system is on morbidity, which is illness and mortality, which is going to be death. Please remember the definition of each of those words. It's very important. So as I said before, and we're going to reiterate here, ICD-10 stands for International Classification of Diseases. The 10 and the CM stands for the 10th revision CM clinical modification. So ICD-10 CM stands for International Classification of Diseases, 10th revision clinical modification. So can you imagine if you had to say that all at one time, every time? So now we call it the ICD-10 CM 10th revision which we're going to be referring to only as your ICD-10. So let's talk about the index. The index is found at the beginning of your book. And this is where you're going to look up your main terms and your subterms. So for example, I have some practice here. So chronic pancreatitis is first. So if you wanted to look chronic pancreatitis up in your index, you need to find your main term. So in chronic pancreatitis, pancreatitis is what your main term is. Chronic describes the type of pancreatitis. So in your index, you're going to look up in the P's, you're going to go to the P's and you're going to look up pancreatitis, and then you're going to follow until you find chronic. Now, we're not putting that into action today. We're just talking about how you go about looking up to find your codes. So be patient, bear with me. We're getting to the part where you're going to be able to do that um, in person or get your hands in that book and really, really, really have some fun. So let's look at anus abscess. So what is your main term there? Abscess is your main term. That is what is going on. We have an abscess. Where is the abscess is the anus. So you would look 
up abscess and then you would go down until you find anus. Acute, acute, sorry, colcitis, acute colcitis. So what is our main term? Colcitis is our main term. Acute describes the colcitis and then abdominal pain. So what is our main term? Pain. Abdominal describes where the pain is. So in your index, you would look up pain and then you would follow down until you found abdominal. So that is the index, the alphabetic index. That is where we start. We look at our medical record. We look at our diagnosis. We find our main term. We look it up in our index. And as you can see here, your index looks like this. So let's say abdomen, abdominal. You can also see condition, but you see acute, angina, and then muscle, muscle deficiency syndrome. And then you have these codes. So you would look up the code in your index here. Now, let's move to the tabular. So talking about your tabular, each section begins with a unique letter and the codes are arranged in numerical order. So once you find what code you wanna look up in your index, for example, if you were gonna look up R10.0, you would go to your tabular and you would look up the R's until you found that code. For example, R10.0, acute abdomen. And then it has all of these notes here that you're gonna need to look, look up and make sure you're in the right area. So you would look it up in your index, then you go to your tabular. You never code straight from your index. We always code two ways. We look up, look it up in the index, then we go to the tabular and we make sure that we have the right code. So let's talk about in official instructional notations. So let's, I'm gonna go back and indicate here. These are your official notations. Your excludes one, excludes two. Um, these are very important for you to understand when you're coding. So we're just going to go through those. So uh, includes, define or give examples of category content. So here is an includes. So uh, this section would include diseases generally recognized as communicable or transmittable. So I, I10 has instructional notations providing guidance to the coders. These notations are providing guidance to you. Since the figures in this chapter are taken directly from Bucks I-10CM for hospitals, you may notice extra symbols and notations meant to enhance the user experience in addition to the official notations that are part of the ICD-10CM release. So that's just telling us that we need to pay attention to these notations. They are there to guide you. So we're gonna talk about excludes one. Excludes one equals not coded here. It indicates the code excluded should be assigned at the same time as the code above the excludes one notes. So let's just take a look at an example of that. So here we see under certain infectious and parasitic diseases is chapter one. It excludes certain localized infections. See the body systems related to the chapter. So um, you're gonna be able to see, as you see excludes one in your manual, it's going to give you directions into what chapter you need to be looking in. This is just under your guidelines. Excludes two is not coded here. Excludes two note indicates the condition excluded is not part of the condition. It is excluded from and a patient may have both conditions at the same time. When exclude notes two appear 
under a code acceptable to report and the excludes two code together. So here you can see excludes one certain localized infection, see the body system. Excludes two is going to say carrier or suspected carrier of infectious diseases, and it gives you examples. Now, I know this is a lot of words, but I want you to bear with this. When we start coding, these things are going to make more sense. Right now, we're just getting the information. So code first or use additional codes. So let's look at streptococcal sepsis. Code first. You're going to code these before you use a streptococcal sepsis code. So I-10 has a coding conversion that requires the underlining condition to be sequenced first, followed by the manifestation. Again, a lot of words. Let's just keep it in mind. Code also equals more than one code required. Sequencing of the two codes depends on the following, the severity of the condition and the reason for the encounter. So let's look at D61.82, and it's going to say here, code also the underlining disorder, such as malignant neoplasm of the breast, which would start at C50 point, and then it has the dash for you to indicate, and then tuberculosis A15 point, and the dash again for you to go in and add a more specific code. Please don't feel overwhelmed by this. I promise that whenever we get in and start coding, these things are going to make sense. We're just going through the information now. We are not put, putting into practical use yet. So the seventh character and placeholder X. What does the seventh character mean in the ICD-10? The seventh character for fractures is going to be what we're using for an example. If the seventh character is not used when required, it will lead to a rejection of the claim even in the ICD-10 grace period. The seventh character extension must always be used in the seventh position, which is the use of the dummy X placeholder. In empty slots for each code that are less than six characters long. Okay, again, <laughs> I know you're like, what does this mean? Okay, so let's take a look at the codes that are listed here on our example. It says uh, M22.8X, other disorders of the patella. So we have an X here, right? That is our dummy placeholder. So this one is going to indicate specific instructions given in your ICD-10. So we're not going to go there yet, but just remember that the X is a seventh character dummy placeholder. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this code has to have seven characters because of this one. The X has to be a placeholder to make that one in the seventh position. Yes, clear as muddy water, but I promise you, when we get to coding and you have to use the X dummy placeholder, it's going to make sense. Before we finish, I want to tell you something about this red dot. What do I call this red dot? This is a stop sign. You cannot use this code on its own. Stop sign again, you cannot use this code on its own because you need that one. These are the codes you're able to use. So anytime you see a red dot in front of one of your codes, it is a stop. You cannot use this code. So that probably makes more sense than anything else that I've said in this little video. But please remember, this is just an introduction to some of your notes that you're going to see in your ICD-10. They're going to make a lot of sense, a lot of sense once we get in and we start coding. In this module, in this information, I'm going to be giving you the information a lot. Then we're going to put the information into action. And that's whatever the aha moment's gonna come. So bear with me, allow me to give you the information. 
so that you can have that aha moment when we start coding. Have a great day and I hope to see you tomorrow at our two o'clock Zoom. Bye-bye, everybody.